Well, the hostage deal was made between Israel and Hamas, but there have been some big players behind the scenes helping mediate these negotiations. One of them, Qatar. Abi Kouadassan joins us now from Berlin with more. So, Abi, tell us how Qatar has helped push these negotiations forward. Travis, Qatar sees being a mediator on the global stage as it is right now as being critical to its own security strategy it is able to talk to both state and non-state actors that the west is perhaps not willing to engage with directly we're talking about the taliban we're talking about iran and in this instance we're talking about hamas Qatar and the United States certainly have a very unique relationship. Just last year, the Biden administration designated Qatar as a major non-NATO ally, which elevated that bilateral security relationship. And we have to remember that the United States has a massive army base in Qatar where thousands of American troops are stationed. When it comes to Hamas, Qatar does host some senior Hamas officials. It has been criticized over the years for that, but some will point out that that particular relationship has led to this deal. Let's have a listen. This pause in the fighting could not have happened if there wasn't a place to go to to speak to Hamas uh, or a country that allowed us to indirectly communicate with them. And imagine if the leadership of Hamas uh, today was in Syria or in Iran. Very difficult for Americans and Israelis and others to go to those countries to have these indirect talks. So geography does matter. Uh, it matters that um, Qatar is a country that is friendly to the West. Now, the Emir of Qatar has previously said that his country will not normalize ties with Israel until there is peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Right now, there are low level ties. And when it comes to Gaza, Qatar has pumped about 10 million U.S. dollars into the enclave every month for several years. Some of that money goes to pay for U.N. food for the poorest families. It also goes to partially pay for salaries of civil servants, including doctors and teachers. So certainly some of the actors involved here see Qatar as a reliable mediator, Travis. And, and Abby, we know a Qatari representative and officials from other Muslim countries, including Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, have been making some really critical, crucial trips in the last week. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, these foreign ministers and representatives from some Muslim and Arab nations have gone to the five member states, the permanent member states on the UN Security Council. That's China, that's Russia, the United States, France, and the United Kingdom. And their main goal is to push these leaders for a permanent ceasefire. Their other goal is to push for more humanitarian aid. The Saudi foreign minister on his trip to London has said that the West essentially has two choices. One, pressure the Netanyahu government to ensure that if sufficient humanitarian aid is entering the enclave, or risk being complicit in collective punishment. We know that Amnesty International has labeled what's going on right now in Gaza as collective punishment, which is a war crime under international law. Just a short while ago, I spoke with Professor Kamrava, who's in Doha, and he talked a little bit about this. Let's have a listen. There's a genocide going on, and the West is fully complicit in this genocide. And so if for this genocide to stop, we need a, a ceasefire. I think it would be mistaken for the West, for the United States, for Israel's own safety, security, and long-term stability to maintain this level of silence now, these foreign ministers and officials on these trips also say that extremism can only be defeated if the Palestinian people who are either living under blockade or un in under occupation have a better option. And they say that better option is a two-state solution and that the international community as a whole has to take steps to move towards that to give the Palestinian people some hope, Travis. All right, Abiko Dawson for us in Berlin. Thank you.